Good morning. Thank you for joining our Light Rod Live session featuring VR Cut Ready Triumph Cutting Workflow. We're going to be demonstrating the revolutionary visual system for driving a Triumph guillotine cutter. We're going to be looking at the 5260, but before we get started cutting, we're going to um, show you a demo of the software that will not only impose your artwork, you can add variable data, it will also program all of the steps for the cutter, programmed through the cloud, picked up directly by the VR cut system, so that when you read a barcode, you will be able to automatically drive the system. Let's get started. Hello, welcome to today's VR cut art to finish webinar demonstration of the VR cut software. As Karen mentioned, we'll start with a software demonstration of VRCut Imposition software. It's called VRCut Impose. We'll create a couple of documents that will be printed out, and we will program the VRCut cutter for custom templates so that a simple barcode scan is all that's needed to run any job that you create in prepress or graphic design. VRCut Impose and VRCut Controller both softwares come included with the purchase of a number of Triumph MBM paper cutters. This is the MBM Triumph 5260, 5560, 6660, and the 7260. Purchase of any of these machines comes included with the purchase of the software and one year of annual licensing from the day a customer registers the software. It's not from purchase price, it's whenever you are ready to imp implement and set up and install your VR cut software is when you get an entire year of usage included with the purchase of the machine. VR cut software is actually two softwares in one, two individual softwares that are usually installed on two different computers for two different users. The VR cut imposed software is an imposition and, and PDF creation tool. It's also a variable data tool, standalone software that takes in artwork and creates PDF print files. This software is generally installed at graphic design or pre-press. An individual who's taking artwork that's already been created, imposing it multiple up on the page, adding variable data if necessary, and creating a PDF print file. Another advantage of this software is it automatically programs the machine on the VRCut controller computer, and it automatically adds a barcode for scanning on that controller computer. These are integrated softwares. They communicate to each other if they're on the same network, or you can set it up to in, uh, communicate through a cloud-based system. Uh, and they uh, complement each other. They work in communication with each other. The VRCut controller, you can see on the right-hand side of the screen here, it's what we'll be focusing on on the second half of this demonstration in the live video portion, is a computer that's hardwired connected to the cutter. It acts as a controller piece. It's also a guidance system. It automatically programs the back gauge of the cutter based on an optimal cut sequence that it has configured itself. No longer do operators have to ent manually enter in measurements that they hand calculated. They, or no, and no longer do they have to figure out how to rotate the paper correctly and, and how to set stacks aside. All of that information is presented to them visually and audibly on a screen in front of their, on, front of, on top of the cutter, and then automatically moves the back gauge to the appropriate sequence step when a cut is made. Today we'll be going through a couple of jobs. We're going to be creating one preset template, a standard five by seven postcard. The software comes with over 200 preset templates, templates that are popular, cut sizes on popular U.S. based paper sizes. All of those templates are in the imposition software right out of the box uh, from installation, 200 jobs ready to be used, and 200 jobs that are already in the controller software. In these situations that are popular paste jobs, do not, there's no communication necessary. They're ready out of the box day one, create a PDF, scan a barcode, and you're ready to go. We'll also demonstrate our new custom template creation capabilities. Now with VRCut Impose and VRCut Controller, you can create any template you'd like on any paper size that is compatible with the Triumph cutter. Uh, you simply enter in a paper size, you enter in your cut size, indicate whether there's bleed. From there, we create an optimized layout, which you have control of making adjustments to. Once you're happy with that layout, you send it over to the controller, and we create a PDF with your artwork all laid out, barcode on top, ready to go. We're gonna create one of each job, We'll be creating a ticket. A ticket is our second one for the custom template. I'm going to hop over to the VRCut Impose software. 
Normally, this is on a, a pre-pressed uh, individual's or graphic designer's computer, but it can also be on the controller computer if you wish to have that workflow. The, the idea here, why we call this the art to finish workflow, is all you need to use the, the controllers, uh, the Triumph Cutter through uh, with our workflow. The only thing that is is not given to you that you provide yourself is the artwork for the job you're cutting at any given time. As long as you have that in a one-up fashion, as an individual PDF, generally used as a PDF, um, artwork of the job you're cutting, our, our system takes care of everything for you from there, from creating the PDF to programming the machine to optimizing the, the finishing process. So hence, we call it art to finish. Today, we're going to be starting by selecting a new job, which is where you'll always be beginning. Again, you have a number of preset templates already loaded in your library day one. And then you have, of course, any custom template you've created in the past at the bottom of your library with custom names that you've created yourself. Any template, preset or custom, can be filtered by a number of options. You can filter by the paper size you're printing on. And you can filter by keywords. In this case, I'm going to filter based on 12 by 18 paper that I'm printing on. I'm going to find 5 by 7. Another nice new feature that we have in the software is this preview window. I can select any template I'd like to get a preview of what it's going to look like when I impose it. That can work for preset templates, or if I've created custom templates in the past, I can also see those as well. To further refine my list, I'm going to type 5 by 7 to filter down to the uh, template I'm looking, to, looking for. I'm going to select that. I can name my project if I like. I can enter bleed. I'm going to check bleed on right here. You can see that that's actually updated the preview, visual preview with a pink bleed space. And I now have to change the orientation of my job. Now, this is based on the orientation of the artwork. And you can see that when I change this to portrait, it actually rotates the paper so that when I bring in my artwork, I don't have to rotate my artwork. Everything's been rotated in accordance with how my artwork's already pre-formatted. In this case, that's portrait. We press finish. We always work in the one-up preview. You bring in your front side artwork. In this case, you only have a front side tab here. But if this was a duplex job, you'd have a second window here to select to toggle over to your backside where you bring in your backside artwork. I can always click on preview and position to get an idea for what it's going to look like before or after I bring in my artwork when I create my PDF. I'm going to exit out of that. I'm going to press import image. I'm going to find my 5 by 7 artwork. I'm going to press open. And it's as easy as that. I've now brought in uh, my artwork. I can look at my preview. It's going to lay that out four up, and it's ready to create with the barcode and the alignment mark and the template name on the top of the page. Just for further information purposes, we will be providing an, another more in-depth demo on this, but you can at any time bring in variable data, whether that is a CSV file of address or variable data in, uh, in the fields that you wish to merge or a pre-composed variable PDF, meaning a PDF that's multiple pages, maybe 400 page PDF for 400 tickets that you're looking to print and stack, a cut and stack. What is nice is that this is a fully fledged imposition software with variable data capabilities, meaning that you have the ability to set sack size. You have the ability to refine the ordering of how it's going to, how that variable data is going to lay out and stack when you cut and stack. It's very important to us to create variable data, especially in terms of addresses and ticket numbering, that is stacked in accordance with how you're going to finish it and to maintain the order of your data that you bring as, as you bring it in. The last thing I want to mention in terms of variable data is the ability to create intelligent mail barcodes and other uh, various other barcoding. If you have that information in your data file, you can bring it into our software and create your own, uh, transform your own barcodes uh, using our variable data capabilities. This is often used most often in terms of creating address, postal, sorted uh, stacks. I'm going to create this PDF and I'm going to send it to the printer for the second half of our call. And that's all we have to do. This is a preset template. We simply find the template, add the artwork, and press create. We send this to the printer and then the barcode will automatically run. No communication was necessary because it's, again, what we call preset, meaning that it's already in our software and it's already in the cutter. The second job we're going to create today is a custom template. You select new job again, and if you know that the template is not in your list as of, the, as of yet, you select the very first option, which will always be custom template. Custom templating allows you to create a, a, a specific name for the project. In this case, I recommend always doing it based on the specifications because, again, remember, you can keyword search next time you're looking for this job. 
the idea will always be we create a template, we save it in our library, we save it in the arrow cut, and next time we want to create this exact template again, we can simply find it as we did previously, select it, bring in our artwork, create a PDF, and it's ready to go. I'm going to be creating on 13 by 19 paper, and I'm going to be printing out or cutting down to a job 5.5 by 2.25 ticket. Now, keep in mind that a prefix number is automatically associated to the job based on what a number is available. This prefix is um, automatically updated based on the paper size you select. So it will be associated to the job and is used for uh, referential purposes later on if necessary. So if you don't have a barcode scanner, you can always sort by the, the number that's been automatically added. It makes it very easy to find your project uh, if you're on the cut controller piece and you don't have a barcode scanner. And we'll take a look at that later. <clears throat> Again, I'm gonna bring over my preview window here. I'm going to create a 13 by 19 paper, and I'm going to add this. All I need to do is, again, in, indicate paper size, indicate cut size, which in this case is 5.5 by 2.25, and indicate whether it has bleed. You can see as I'm making changes, the preview is uh, showing me what it's going to create. I can always make adjustments to this later. Another nice thing about this auto creation feature is I can experiment with which, one, uh, which orientation is going to get me the most up. For example, when I change my paper to landscape, I get 15 up. I can count here, or I can look it up here. And if I create portrait, it's only gonna give me 14 up. So we're gonna select landscape. I've now saved this template into my template library. So next time I wanna create a PDF, it will be there. I simply find in the list. I don't have to enter in any specifications. It's already in there. And I wanna save it over to the VR Cut controller. Now, you would make any adjustments to your template if necessary and then save that. We'll do another in-depth training on making adjustments, but in this case, I can go to my preview. I'm very happy with how it's laid out by default. I know I can't fit another row or column onto the page or have any uh, need to, to change margins or pitch or anything like that. So I'm gonna simply select the, uh, the scissors. You can do that while in preview or, or out of it. And I select save to VRC. This VRC folder that it's saving to is a network connected folder that's on the VRCut controller computer. Now this is saving to a folder that's mutually shared between the two computers, and that folder can either reside on the VRCut controller computer or reside on the, in the cloud. I believe actually in this case, I'm saving to a mutually connected Dropbox folder that's available through the Windows operating system on both computers. And as long as they're both pointing to the same place, you can, you can modify on the imposed computer where it points to by default, and you can modify on the controller computer where it points to by default. As long as those two are pointing to the same folder, whether through Office Network or through the cloud, then that's all that's needed to share the information successfully. Essentially, this VRC file does have to get to a place uh, shared with the controller computer, and a very easy way to do that is through mutually shared folders, either through a Dropbox folder or through uh, or through a network connected folder path. Perfect. I press that save and now I'm ready to go. I bring in my artwork as I did previously. I create my PDF. And that's it. I'll now send this as well to the printer. And we will simply pick these up at the printer. In the second half of the call here, I'm going to hand it over to Karen, who's going to take these jobs we created together and cut them on the controller system on the Triumph Cutter. Thank you so much for your time with me on the software portion of the presentation today. Keep an eye on your calendars for future sessions. We'll be updating the, the, uh, the focus of those sessions as time go on. We'll also be adding recordings of each session that you ever missed uh, to the lightrodlive.com website for you to catch up on later. I'm going to switch over now. What you will need to do in the Uber conference is go to the bottom right corner of your screen. If you click over there, you should see it say screenshot. Click on that and change it to grid. Once you click on grid, you're going to see all the participants that are currently in the session, and you should see one that has a video, live video, currently showing the uh, Triumph Cutter. On the bottom left corner of that is three dots next to a microphone. Click on the three dots and say pin video. Once you do that, go back to where it says grid and click on dynamic, and now that video will take up your entire screen, and you'll be able to see that for the remainder of the call. Thank you so much, and uh, have fun watching the second half of the live video presentation. Thanks, Zach. We now have just printed the documents that Zach created, and we're going to go about cutting them. 
What we're going to be cutting on is a VR Cut Ready Triumph Cutter. This is a 5260. There are four models, as explained at the beginning of the presentation, that support the VR Cut workflow. What makes them special is what we call VR Cut Ready, is that there's a card inside of the cutter that will allow us uh, to send communication from a PC or a tablet and directly to the cutter that's controlled by the VR Cut software to move the back gauge of the device and present a visual representation of the cutter to the user. Here for this demo, we have quite a large screen. Typically, you would just have a little tablet up here. Um, so, uh, it's not necessarily uh, such a big screen, but we wanted you to be able to zoom in on that so you could get the operator experience. The Triumph cutter line that is supported by VR Cut are, have the um, safety beams. These allow uh, the cutter an additional level of safety in addition to the traditional double paddles where you have both your hands occupied and pressing down to drop the, uh, the blade. This uh, secondary safety um, protects also a third user from maybe reaching into the guillotine as when you break the light beam, it will stop the cutting process. There are a lot of other great features about the Triumph uh, series of uh, VR Cut Ready headers. We encourage you to talk to your MBM dealer or call up the MBM folks in Charleston, South Carolina or working with your regional sales manager in your area. Um, uh, but regarding the software, um, that's what, that's uh, our specialty. So we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the print output. Some of these features were, were presented in the demo, but let me just emphasize them again. This postcard is laid out in such a way that it's actually also compatible with the standard templates in the ArrowCut Prime and ArrowCut Velocity series. This is great. The uh, Velocity and Prime are slitter cutter creasers. You can learn more about those in other sessions. But the idea of having 200 and some standard templates interchangeable with guillotines and slitter cutter creasers is a unique uh, capability that MBM has brought to automate both types of ways in which to cut documents. What is unique on the document created specifically for the cutter are these guide markers these little numbers that you see in the margin areas of the document help the operator make sure the document is facing the right direction and we're on the appropriate cut. We have a barcode, the barcode will be read. Just We have a standard barcode reader that's just connected through a USB port. It will pick up that barcode and automatically direct the cutter to the right layout. Let's get started. To start a job, the operator simply reads the barcode and it will auto load all of the jobs that our um, artwork has been created for a five by seven postcard. So you can see we have quite a few jobs in our output folder. I, in the demo, you, you may have noted that Zach saved the output artwork in the cloud. This way, an operator could print the document that's in one location and then cut the document in another location. This is very, very useful, especially in today's environment when they often don't have the graphic artists in the print centers, maybe they're working from home, and this all seamlessly ties together with just a click of the mouse, saving and retrieving from a cloud location. The job that was just created is this job number 73, I can see by the date and timestamp, and as we open this job, it will auto load the artwork. Ready to cut step one. You may hear a voiceover that is also giving the same directions that you see visually on the screen. It's telling us to jog our square, square stack to pay, place our paper so that the light beam is at the number one location. There's a little one here and the light beam is lined up with that, that light beam. I'm now going to uh, do my first cut. Again, hold both my hands on the paddle. I drop the blade. It indicates to drop, to drop the scraps in the trash bin, rotate the document clockwise, and I note that the document is at two. Had I turned the document the opposite direction, I would note that the, the document was not at the right cut location. The 
operator at any time has not had to measure the document, program in optimal cut sequencing, all of this is done for the operator. Many of you in the industry know that typically um, uh, you need a skilled guillotine operator because one cut, you can lose you know, every profit part of the, the job and that it would have to be reprinted. So often they leave jobs, uh, kind of get, we get uh, backlogged in the cutting department. Now you can have anyone with uh, really no skill training at all. They don't have to worry. Everything will be cut perfectly. It's now indicating to put the stack onto a work onto a workbench in the screen area, and so we're just going to set that aside for further cutting. Again, our little trash can opens up. And now it come asks us to combine the stacks. So we may have another uh, larger stack. Here I'm just cutting a few sheets of paper. We place those together and place them into the guillotine. We quickly glance at our screen. We can see which way or we know we're on step six. And we have the six pointing the correct direction. And our last cut. And, uh, and now indicates the job's completed. And my favorite part, if we can zoom in, is you get a little trophy. Everyone is a winner. <laughs> our job is complete. And again, you can see without uh, any measurements uh, and really very minimal training, we're able to uh, get a perfect cut stack of cards. Again, these, uh, this numeric guiding and layout are all available um, for automatic setup. We recently have added a very exciting feature to VR Cut, and that is the ability to create any type of custom template. So if you find, for example, these little uh, tickets, um, ticket size is not an available template in the cutter. So through the Smart Layout Assistant, you can automatically create the ticket layout and then um, uh, tell it the size of the ticket, 13 by 19 paper, and it will do the optimal layout, including the bleed edge. Um, now, in order to program the cutter, <laughs> we're not really programming it. We're downloading a file called a VRC file. The VRC file contains all of this information on how the document is going to be cut, which way to rotate for all 20 different cuts on this page. So as soon as Zach hit save, it loaded not only this artwork to print and, and visually see the uh, artwork for cutting, it also loaded a file that VR Cut will use to, to automatically guide. It's saved to a specific location. In this case, it's location 1008. That location will automatically, when we read our barcode, it's asking me if I would like to close my current job, and I do want to close my current job, and I'm going to load my new job. We have two jobs that have been done in the 1008 uh, type of a layout. And we can see the latest job that was created. We simply click uh, open. Dog to square step. And it presents the artwork and tells us to place the page in this direction. Because it is a custom layout, we don't have the little numeric values, which are very useful. But once you've cut a few jobs, you really, and the custom jobs, you can just visualize where you need to cut. Based on the expertise of many cutters, we have um, we have programmed it in a very similar way, where you always rotate in the same direction. 
cutting off each of the three edges. And then cutting the stacks. Step four. Let me just do a few more cuts so that you can you can see the the tickets. tickets um, even with the artwork you know pretty close here on the page we have the perfect bleed edge and um, perfectly centered again anyone who's ever operated a guillotine you know how difficult it is to get all of this program or auto uh, adjusting the blade at each step I'd like to zoom in on the screen for users who are um, familiar with VR cut you may not be familiar with the new capability of um, loading the VRC file. So let me just click here in the bottom right corner, there's the options menu. And I'm not sure if we can, um, if we can see, I think we can, we can see that pretty clearly here. And in that options menu, we have two folders. You can see both uh, folders are pointing to Dropbox. We have the folder for the output as well as the VRC file. Um, so this is where this, this folder is new, and this is where you want to point, and or if you're not on a network, just simply copy the VRC folder to this lo the location um, so that you can automatically, um, once you read that barcode with the unique number on it, it will know which uh, sequence to put on the table. There are some other um, uh, information, um, uh, some of the models, it uh, the blade the blade drops um, from left to right, so you you want to place your documents to the right side. So we will show that artwork. Combining work, uh, combining the stacks is another option as well. We can speak the directions as we just talked about, and auto start on the barcode and artwork. Well, we appreciate you attending today's demo. We encourage you to check out the demonstration in. Uh, um, on lightrodlive.com. We will be having demonstrations and each week we'll talk about different features and capabilities and the sessions in the first week will be posted as videos. These are the introduction videos, but you can jump in at any time. The uh, presentations will describe different capabilities of these devices. If you'd like a custom demo, just please contact us at lightrodlive.com or on our Lightrod website. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.